from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Judy Modi series, but she has, of course, written many, many other books, including a series about Judy Moody's little brother, Sting. At least 15 picture books, a bunch of early readers, and the American Girl series about Julie, a girl growing up in the 1970s. She herself grew up in the 1970s as well, as the youngest of five sisters and Rare, let's have a big Judy Moody rare. Rare! Okay, and if two things are alike, if I have a connection to you, she says, same, same. So if you like to read and I like to read, we go, same, same. Okay, so today I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some of the stories, the true life stories behind Judy Moody and her little brother, Stink. Every book I write usually has something that really happened to me in the story, some true story, and um, some of you who were here this morning may have heard, I grew up with four older sisters. Don't you feel for me? Four. So with four sisters, you can imagine some of the stories. I even have a great hair disaster story to tell you that made it into my sister's club book. But I wanted to start out showing you what does it look like when I first start to write a Judy Moody book down. So here's the real deal. Here's how it actually begins. <laughs> this is the famous napkin that I scribble my ideas on. And um, you can't really see it from where you're sitting, but I have a whole bunch of stuff about Judy scribbled on here. And you might wonder, why do I begin writing a book on a napkin? Well, because I never know when a great idea is going to come to me. I'm not always at home at my desk or in front of my computer. So whenever an idea hits me, I have to just jot it down on whatever I have around. In all the Judy Moody books, I'll tell you a little known secret about Judy Moody. In every book, there's a mention of an ice cream shop called Screamin' Mimi's. And even though I put it in the books, it's a real ice cream shop in the town where I live in Northern California. So if you ever come to that town, you might see me there jotting down ideas on a Screamin' Mimi's napkin. That's how it all begins. But how do I get a great idea for a Judy Moody book? Um, for example, sometimes I take things kind of like myself and put them in my books and make them happen to Judy. So for example, when I was Judy's age, I loved to collect stuff. So I made Judy a collector and she has some very unusual collections. Can anybody here think of, anybody who's a Judy Moody reader think of something Judy likes to collect? <gasps> she collects ABC gum, doesn't she? Can you guys tell everybody what ABC stands for? Already been chewed, that's right. So her dream is to one day go to San Luis Obispo, California to see the real wall of gum. It's an entire building in this town, no lie, where you can take your ABC gum and stick it on the wall. What else does she collect? She collects doll parts, doesn't she? Because she likes to fix up all the dolls for the kids at the hospital. But especially she collects Barbie doll heads. And that's because we all know the head is the best part, right? With four older sisters, they had all the good Barbies. And I always would chop, on mine, I'd chop their hair off to see what it would look like. Or color their face with green magic marker. So. I used to sneak into my sister's room and I'd pop the heads off their Barbies and save all the heads so I could put them back on mine. What else does she collect? She collects scabs, doesn't she? <laughs> Sounds kind of gross, but that's because I actually did that. I wanted to be a scientist when I grew up. And my mom got me a microscope for my birthday when I was eight. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool 
to look at your own skin under the microscope, but there's only a little tiny space. You can't fit your hand under there. So I pulled off a scab so that I could look at it under the microscope. And it was really interesting. So then I thought, hey, I could save the scab and then I can look at it anytime I want, right? So that's how Judy Moody came to collect scabs. What else? <gasps> right! She collects sugar packets. We used to go to the restaurant and mom and dad would talk and talk and talk and we would play with all the sugar packets. And in my day when I grew up, sugar packets were really cool because they always had like the president's heads on them or the flags of the United States or all the seashells at the Atlantic Ocean or something. So it was really cool to collect sugar packets. What else? <gasps> Band-Aids, of course. Judy wants to be a doctor when she grows up, and her heroine is Elizabeth Blackwell, who was the first woman ever to become a doctor in this country. So she collects Band-Aids, and I got a whole idea for a book just from a Band-Aid. I went to the store to see what Judy might collect, and I found a whole box of Band-Aids that, were, that had pictures on them drawn by real kids like you. The company had a contest and you could draw a picture for a Band-Aid, send it in, and if they like your picture, they print it on a Band-Aid. So in the box, I found this real Band-Aid. It has a picture of the Earth or the globe with a little Band-Aid across the globe and it says, heal the world. And I thought, oh, Judy Moody could enter a Band-Aid contest and she could try to save the world. So just from this Band-Aid, I got the idea to write the book, Judy Moody Saves the World. Um, I also was creating a girl with a lot of moods and I thought, a girl with a lot of different moods should have a mood ring, right? I grew up in the 70s when mood rings were popular. So in the very first book, if you don't know what a mood ring is, it's a ring that changes color with your mood. And it comes with a little chart that tells you what mood you're in. So I decided I would give Judy a mood ring. In the very first book, I wrote all these scenes about how she got a mood ring. Well, I have someone who helps me with the book, my editor, and my editor read the book and she cut out all the parts with the mood ring. She thought it was a good idea, but she didn't think it fit into the story of the first book. So she took her red pen and cut out all those pages, but I saved them and she didn't know it. So, the, so when I went on to write the next Judy Moody book, Judy Moody Gets Famous, I gave her a mood ring. And my editor read the book and she got out her red pencil and she cut out all the parts with the mood ring again. But I saved them, of course. So then I went on to write Judy Moody Saves the World. I gave her a mood ring. It got cut out again three times. She thought it didn't fit in the story. Finally, finally, I got smart and I thought, hey, I'm going to write a whole book about how Judy Moody gets a mood ring and then they can't cut it out or there wouldn't be a book. So just from a mood ring, I got the idea to write Judy Moody Predicts the Future. So as a writer, anything can be an idea for a story. The smallest thing, something that happens in your own life. My favorite way to get ideas is I like to take real stories that happened to me and my family and make them happen to Judy and Stink. So I'll give you an example. I'm gonna tell you a funny story of a time that I played a really funny joke on my sister. And then I'll show you how I change it a little bit to fit my characters, okay? But in real life, my whole family Got to, we grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but we got to come, yay! We got to come to Washington, D.C., of all places, to visit our friends. And when we got here, my mom and dad said, hey, Washington, we're at the Capitol, we should go on a tour of the White House. 
and you can go through a lot of the rooms where the president and the first lady live, right? So my mom and my dad and all four sisters got to go on a tour of the White House. And I was too little since I was the youngest. They said I would get bored and I would start to cry. So I had to stay home. Well, I cried anyway because when you're the youngest, you want to do whatever your big sisters do, right? So I was so upset and our friends were trying to cheer me up and to cheer me up, they got out this box with all these cool toys and magic tricks and um, stuff you could use to play jokes on people. And they told me I could play with any of the toys, but they said, if you find something you really like, you can keep it and take it home with you. So I went through the box and as soon as I saw it, I knew this was the thing I was going to keep forever and ever because I knew I could use it to play a really funny joke on my sisters while they were at the White House and I wasn't. And if anybody here read the first Judy Moody book where she's in a mood, you probably guessed the thing was, anybody have a guess? This is a clue. <laughs> a fake hand. It looked really real. It had fingernails and everything, but it was made of plastic or rubber. S excuse me. So I took the fake hand and I went all over our friend's house and I tried to think of what would be the best place to put the hand to really freak out my sisters. And after I went through all the rooms, I got to the bathroom. And I thought, hey, how about the toilet, right? <laughs> so I was probably only like four or five years old. So. Um, so I made sure nobody was watching. And I lifted up the toilet seat when no one was looking. And I made the fake hand stick out, look like it's reaching out to get you, sticking out of the toilet. And then I couldn't wait for my sisters to come home. They were at the White House forever. I thought they would never come home. And finally, finally, they came back. But they were so excited about their tour, they couldn't stop talking about all the cool stuff they saw at the White House, like the bowling alley and the movie theater. I didn't care. All I could think of is, when is somebody going to go into the bathroom and find the hand? And finally, finally, my sister Michelle went into the bathroom. She goes in there and shuts the door. And about two seconds later, we heard this, <laughs> this really big scream. And she came running out of the bathroom, no lie. She goes, Mom, Dad, there's somebody in the toilet. <laughs> we were cracking up so bad. My poor sister, she will never live this down. She's a grown up now, it doesn't matter. When we all get together, we still tell our favorite family story of the time I put the fake hand in the toilet. So I took that same story, since it's my favorite family story, and I decided I would make it happen to my characters, Judy and Stink, right? So um, in my book, now, of course, when you're a writer, you get to use your imagination and make up whatever you want to happen, right? In real life, I didn't get to go to the White House. So in the book, Stink, who's the youngest like me, gets to go to the White House and Judy has to stay home. So Stink dresses up as a human flag. He takes an old tablecloth made out of red and white stripes and he makes a flag and a hat with all the stars for the 48 states on his hat. What did he do wrong? <gasps> he forgot two whole states. He forgot all about Alaska and Hawaii. So Judy helps him get all the right amount of stars on his hat. He goes to the White House. Judy has to stay home and go to school that day. It's a regular school day. And when she gets to school, she finds out it's kind of a bummer. It happens to be brush your teeth week at school. 
And if you don't know what Brush Your Teeth Week is, that's when the dentist comes to school and the one dentist dresses up like a tooth and the lady dentist dresses up as a box of dental floss. So Mr. Tooth and Mrs. Floss are at school and out of all the kids in the whole Virginia Dare school, they pick Judy Moody. She has to come up in front of everybody and she has to be the cavity. So stink, the human flag is off at the White House meeting the president and Judy has to be a cavity. And now she's, you can imagine, she's in kind of a bad, mad mood. And that's when she gets the great idea, hey, I'm gonna play a funny joke on Stink while he's at the White House and I'm not. And so Judy does the same trick I told you about with the fake hand. She puts it in the toilet for Stink to find. And when Stink comes home and he goes in the bathroom and sees it, he screams just like my sister did. He comes running out of the bathroom and all the stars for the 50 states go flying off of his hat. So you guys can do that too. If you like to write, you can take a story that really happened to you in your life and you can turn it into a story or a book and, and put illustrations with it. Okay, now I wanted to tell you, um, I wanted to take a chance to tell you about my brand new book that stars Judy and Stink together. I had so many boys that were reading Judy Moody that everywhere I went to talk to kids, the boys said, when are you gonna write a book about Stink? So finally, Stink has his own books now and now Judy and Stink are starring together in full color because I've had so many readers ask me, what do they look like in color? So the brand new book is Judy Moody and Stink in the mad, 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 mad treasure hunt. And if kids may not know the title, you could ask anybody older than you in the audience and they might remember an old funny movie called It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. So that's what I based the title on. The, tr they go on a treasure hunt. Judy and Stink are on a short vacation. They go to Ocracoke Island off the co in the Outer Banks, off the coast of North Carolina. Stink can't even pronounce it, so he calls it Artichoke Island. And when they get to the island, they meet a guy who's dressed up as a pirate. His name is Scurvy Sam. And Scurvy Sam is having a treasure hunt and Judy and Stink have to solve a whole bunch of clues and riddles to try to see who can win the most pirate gold. If you win the most, you get a ride on his pirate ship. But everywhere they go, they see two other kids, tall boy and smart girl, and they're sure that they're gonna get beat out by tall boy and smart girl. So I'm gonna read you just a short piece from the beginning. This is called Artichoke Island. As long as ships have sailed the seas, there have been pirates. And as long as there have been pirates, Stink Moody has wanted to sail on a ship to an island, a treasure island. A ferry boat wasn't exactly a pirate ship, but still, Stink reached into his survival kit, AKA his backpack, compass, flashlight, notebook, treasure island, pirate flag, pirate rule book, spyglass. From the upper deck of the ferry, Stink peered through his spyglass with one eye, the eye not covered with a pirate patch, that is. All he could see was blue, 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 blue sky, blue water, blue t-shirt? His sister, Judy Moody, was blocking his view. Hey, Judy, you make a better door than a window, said Stink. When Judy moved, Stink focused his spyglass on the horizon. I think I see it, said Stink. Artichoke Island. You mean Ocracoke Island, Judy said. Whatever. I just want to meet pirates and see shipwrecks and real gold and find treasure. We're only in North Carolina for a few days, Stink. Through his spyglass, Stink spotted mom and dad on the lower deck. Ahoy! You there, down on the poop deck, he called. What's the poop deck, Judy asked. 
wait, that's where all the seagulls poop, right? Let me look. Judy grabbed the spyglass from Stink. Stink swung his arms in the air and sang like a pirate. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. Yo, ho, ho, and a bucket of fun. Stink, there's a boy on the poop deck staring up at you. Stink didn't care. He sliced the air with his invisible sword. Fifteen chests on a dead man's bum. Yo, ho, ho, and a packet of gum. Stink pretended to walk the plank on the upper deck, but just then, the boat hit a bunch of waves. Judy hung on tight. Stink slumped to the deck, making pukey stomachache faces. What's wrong, Judy asked. Are you gonna puke? Arr, never say puke when a pirate's about to puke, said Stink. <laughs> Judy tried to think of something, anything, to take Stink's mind off the pukes. <gasps> a joke! Stink, what do you call pirate throw up? I said, please don't say puke, said Stink. I didn't say puke, said Judy. I said throw up. You're like the girl who cried throw up or something, said Stink. Okay, what do you call pirate heave ho? I call it gross, said Stink. No, you call it pieces O eight, A T E, get it? Judy laughed herself silly. My feet itch, Stink said, and my teeth hurt. Do I have red blotches on me? Are my teeth falling out? Tummy ache, feet itch, teeth falling out, red face, and I'm cranky. I'll say, said Judy. That's it, said Stink. I have it. Have what? Scurvy, said Stink. I'm dead. Thank you. We just have a couple minutes left. Um, if you want to figure out your, own, your very own pirate name, you can look in Stinkopedia and turn to pirates. And who would like to get a pirate name today? Really? Okay, you ready? So you take, it has three rows, and you pick a word from each row. It's really easy. So who, for example, could be Dead Eye, Canker Sore, Brigadoon. That could be your pirate name. Anybody else want a pirate name up here? Okay. You could be Blimey Badfish Baldhead. <laughs> and last of all, um, for those of you who have read all the Judy Moody's and you're looking for the next thing, my brand newest book is about three sisters. There are a lot of stories about my sisters that I couldn't tell with Judy Moody because she has a brother. So I put a lot of funny stories about the sisters in my book, The Rule of Three. In this book is one of my favorite stories that I've been waiting and waiting for the perfect moment to tell. And it's a story that if your mom and dad grew up in the 60s or 70s, they may remember. But my sisters, we all grew up with curly hair, and my sisters wanted straight hair. So they got the brilliant idea that they would try to iron their hair on the ironing board. So my one sister, she would lean over and lay her hair out, and they'd get the iron really hot. And my other sister would try to iron it to make it straight. And you have to have it really hot. Well, all of a sudden, one day, she was ironing my sister's hair, and the phone rang. And she went to get the phone, and she was talking to her friend. But instead of putting the iron up, she forgot and left it down. And all of a sudden, she smelled this horrible smell, and she ran into the room and lifted up the iron. And when my other sister stood up, she had the whole shape of the iron burned out of the back of her hair. And she had to go to the beauty shop and get her hair all cut off short. So you probably have some good hair disaster stories, too. But I had to put my funny story of ironing the hair in my sister's club book. OK, does anybody really quick have uh, one or two questions? Anybody wanted to ask a question? California? Yeah? Oh, interesting question. She said, if I live in California, 
why it, does Judy Moody live in Virginia? Well, before I lived in California, I lived in Williamsburg, Virginia for several years, and I love Williamsburg. Yay. So, um, so you'll notice a lot of the names in the Judy Moody book, like she lives on Croker Road, will be from Williamsburg. But the real reason, if you really want the real honest truth, I really wanted to tell the story about when Stink went to the White House and the hand in the toilet. So I had to have Judy live somewhere close enough so Stink could go on a field trip to the White House. One more question? Um, is Judy Moody ever gonna go to fourth grade? <gasps> <laughs> Whoa. Good question. <laughs> I'll tell you a little secret. Um, so far, I don't have any plans for her to get any older because I love third grade. That was my favorite time of elementary school. But you heard it here today, Judy Moody is going to become a movie. And so there's a, there's a chance that in the movie, she's going to be a little teeny bit older. So not sure yet, but she might someday make it to fourth grade. However, Ramona was in third grade for 15 years, so <laughs> I have a ways to go. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. You've been a wonderful audience. Thanks for coming to the Book Fest. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.